All right, and welcome back to In Your Head Wrestling Radio. I am the internet icon, the pride of the pilgrims, handsome Jackie Jones. Oh, man. And we're doing this live on the Facebook. Now, if you were watching for the last two minutes, you watch a lot of nonsense. You just watch me setting this up. But now we're here, and the show has begun. So for tonight, I don't know how often we'll do this. Maybe every week. I don't know. But for tonight, if you want to call in, all the information's on the Facebook page. Get yourself a Zoom and uh, join on in. It'll be a good time. So I'm going to answer the questions on Facebook. I'm going to go over the AEW pay-per-view and maybe some news. We'll find out. Uh, let's see here. So. Uh, Incher is not here. I don't know what he's doing. I think he said he's going to sleep. Now he knows all day long. He's like, I've been awake. I'm probably going to be tired. Maybe I should take a nap. But no. It's like, forget it. I'm going to go to sleep right when the show starts. But that's fine. I know he needs his beauty sleep. Man, does he? All right. He's a good looking man. I'm just messing with him. All right. So double or nothing was Wednesday. I really enjoyed this pay-per-view. Now, from what I understand, uh, WWE took the advice I've been giving them. Because, of course, it was because I I told them specifically. They're like, well, Jackie Jones says it, so let's do it. So AEW is like night and day when you compare the no crowd shows, in my opinion. I mean, both of them would benefit from an actual crowd. But uh, just having the, the audience there of wrestlers on the AEW shows adds an atmosphere. It also gives the wrestlers something to, to play with. So they're, they're interacting with the, uh, with the audience there. It's completely different than dead silence on uh, a lot of the WWE shows. So for weeks, for months, I've been saying, just give in a copy of WWE. And from what I understand, they did on Raw. And I did not see Raw, so I don't know. But uh, unless everyone's uh, is lying to me, they did that on Raw. Um, I, I just saw a picture, and apparently, like they didn't give the people chairs, which I thought was a little strange. It's like you can uh, you're gonna do the uh, you're gonna sit there as an audience member, but you can't even you can't even sit down. You're just gonna stand. And I think they had a plexiglass, which you know that's cool, plexiglass there to, for to protect from uh, spitting on people, breathing on people, getting people sick. So we get that. I get it. But uh, I did not see the show, so I'm not exactly sure. From from uh, what I've seen, most people said that uh, that the, the show was not as good, from what I understand. Whatever. Uh, Dobbs is here. Oh, my God. In your head live video. That's right, Dobbs, my friend, my pal, my amigo, my compadre. He's a good man here. Uh, we're witnessing in your head history here. Exactly. In your head history live here on in your head. Uh, Vic says they did it. They were buying hockey boards. Interest. Interest. So, yeah. Hmm. All right, folks, let's get to go. So let's see. Double or nothing. Double or nothing. So, uh, Al Ulb, he sent me a, a link here. Just, I know what happened, but. I'd like to some notes here. Notes. I need the notes. Mm. Okay. So uh, the best friends, uh, Chuck Taylor and Trent. Why is it just, you know, I think it would work if it was Chuck and Trent or Chuck Taylor and Trent, whatever. Trent Trent Stevens, Trent Beretta, Trent Smith, Trent McGee. But Either they both have to have last names or they each just have a first name. You can't be Chuck Taylor and Trent. It's got to be Chuck and Trent or Chuck Chuck Taylor, Chuck E. T. and Trent, Trent B. Chuck E. T. and Trent B. But either Trent's got to have a last name, which I think is their preference, or Taylor's going to drop Taylor and just be Chuck. Uh, versus a private party. It's a private party. So, yeah, this was, uh, this was a fun match. I'm a fan of both teams. Uh, I remember when the when the um, best friends first came in, I thought they were fine. 
I wasn't like in love with them, but uh, these are these are guys that really came into their own, and I, I, that happens a lot in AEW because uh, some of the guys are green to television. Um, I know Trent Brett has been on TV a lot, but uh, you know, maybe not actually as as like a talent that's being you know showcased. Uh, same thing with Sabian, who I was not a big fan of. I'm still not like a huge fan, uh, Kip Sabian, but I do think he's already starting to come into his own and show more of his personality. So um, when you have a new corporate uh, federation like this, that is just bound to happen. Uh, oh, so then we had the uh, the the actual pay per view start. That was the pre show match. Um, so the actual pay per view started, and this was the casino ladder match. I had so much fun watching this match, and I know there's some people the the uh, the cornet puppets. The cornet puppets are people who have no opinions of their own. And they just pop it whatever Jim Cornette tells them to. There are people – now, I'm not saying you can't agree with Cornette. That's fine. But if you, like, change your view or if you watch wrestling specifically thinking, what will Jim Cornette think of this? Or what anyone else will think of this? What will Dave Meltzer think of this? You're not – you're fucked in the head. You don't you're, – you're an actual sheep. You see sheep thrown around all the time, but that's like being a sheep. So – Watch wrestling, watch a movie, watch whatever it is you want to watch and, ju- and enjoy it or don't enjoy it on your own merit. Don't be like, well, oh, man, I'm, I actually enjoy this. But Jim Cornette's going to hate it. Oh, oh, I better say I don't like it. Or, oh, man, I mean, even just I, like I see people say, oh, Jim Cornette's going to think this. Who gives a fuck? Just watch a show and whatever you think, you think. Then you can go listen and agree or disagree with whatever. But anyway. So you had Luchasaurus, Frankie Kazarian, uh, Chris, uh, Kip Sabian with uh, Jimmy Havoc and Penelope Port. For uh, Penelope, I'm a big fan of. Sabian's starting to come to his own. I've always been a fan of Havoc, but I actually think that the uh, the suit look works for Havoc. I think it's a better look. I would I would stick with it. Uh, I like the, uh, the blood-spattered white suit. Thumbs up for me. I think he looks more like a star that way. Uh, Scorpio Sky, uh, Scorpio's really another guy I think uh, has the potential to be a, a big superstar. And I think they know that. That's why they are giving him some vignettes and stuff. Uh, Joey Janela, who I know some people are really uh, anti, and that's fine. But uh, I, I'm not saying I love the guy like he's my favorite, but I, I, I dig him. I, I enjoy uh, Joey Janela. And uh, I know people call him, you know, uh, Jelly Janela. And, again, like, is he they got the best um, physique? No. But neither did any of the guys that Jim Cornette managed besides uh, Stan Lee. In fact, he, he's, he's shaped like a lot of those guys. I mean, is he worse shaped than Bob Eaton or, um, or Gigolo Jimmy Del Rey or even Dr. Tom Pritchard most of his career? Uh, and definitely lover boy Dennis Condry. And I love those guys. I'm not saying he's better than any of those guys. But uh, just look-wise, I mean, he could be one of those dudes, to be honest. Uh, Why are you saying he's your favorite? Who am I talking about? I don't know. Jim is turning into a real curmudgeon at his old age. It's very true. Dobbs Dean McGee. Or Mia. McGee, whatever. Fuck. He, uh, He agrees with Vic. Orange Cassidy, my favorite. He is the man. Now, so I saw some people were mad that he he was doing some stuff like trying to put up the ladder and couldn't figure it out. It works for me. I love it. If you don't like it, I can I can't say you're wrong or right. I will say this though. Now, I said a little while ago that I've always been behind Orange Cassidy, and then uh, Al was like, "Well, technically, in April of '92." <laughs> All right, so when he first debuted, I did question if this would be a gimmick you could sh- he could do every week, and how would you do it? And I was I was questioning that, but as time went on, he uh, it it was evident to me that this guy has it. And the one uh, big thing I don't want to just make this uh, agree or disagree with Jim Cornette, but one thing I really disagree on Jim Cornette is when he says that people watch this who don't who aren't wrestling fans who aren't AEW fans and they're turned off by Orange Cassidy. I've personally seen evidence of the exact opposite of this, and I thought so too because it's just like he's funny and I okay so I did an interview uh, 
Saturday on Without Your Head. And uh, one of the guys was wearing an elite shirt. So I mentioned, you know, wrestling. This was a horror movie, guys. And uh, he watched wrestling uh, during the Attitude Era, stopped watching in 2000, started watching it for AEW. And uh, his favorite, um, I forget who his favorite was now, that he mentioned. I forget, I'm sorry. But, um, oh, uh, Hangman Page. And his wife's favorite, who's, who doesn't actually even watch wrestling at all normally, Orange Cassidy. Now you can say, well, that's, uh, you know, uh, one person, whatever. But I've run into that several times. When I go to Chicago uh, with Chi Town Matt, uh, his group of buddies are, they watch wrestling, but they're not like hardcore wrestling fans like us. I would, they're really more WWE fans. And all of them, their favorite guy is Orange Cassidy. I think he's a guy that if you, you just watch for the first time, and if you want to just have a fun show, you see that guy and you think, oh, this guy's something I don't see in, in, in other wrestling, and he's fun, and I like it. So I actually think he's a guy perfect for AEW and gets uh, a new audience for AEW. Colt Cabana, I'm not the biggest Colt Cabana fan, but he, again, has an audience, so that's cool. Uh, Darby Allen, I'm a huge fan of. Uh, he was doing some crazy spots in this match, um, taking some uh, insane dives. Uh, he did this one spot where uh, Brian Cage was the big surprise. He uh, put him on top of a ladder and threw him outside of the ring. That looked, that did not look like a good time. It looked like the painful time, in fact. Uh, so, yeah, a uh, huge Darby Allen fan, one of my favorites in AEW. I could see him uh, – I'd like to see him world champ at some point. I know some people have a problem with his uh, size. And I get that. I can't say people are wrong. But um, I think this point in time, uh, size really isn't uh, an issue in wrestling. In fact, if you look at other um, combat sports, the main stars are smaller guys. And I don't think people watch wrestling anymore uh, with the idea that this is some kind of uh, – like we're watching a make-believe fight. Just don't think that's really in people's minds because you can watch real fighting, so you're not going to watch wrestling to see like guys – like what, what a realistic fight would be. So you're watching it uh, to be entertained. And uh, now, do I personally? That's is my is that my personal favorite type of wrestling? Not really. Like I like uh, old school wrestling, but you have to accept that that's what wrestling is, or just quit watching it. All right. By the way, if anyone does want to join me here on the Zoom, uh, there's links on the uh, in the Facebook page. How to do so. And uh, my my buddy uh, Vic will uh, supply you with said links if uh, can't figure it out. Uh, MJ. Oh, so anyway, Brian Cage was the mystery man. Huge, huge pickup in my opinion for um for AEW. Brian Cage, uh, great star. He looks like a huge star. A big guy. I'm not against big guys. I just think uh, it's not necessary. But if you have a really big guy, that's cool too. Uh, and a big guy who can wrestle, because I do think you have to be able to wrestle today. You can't just be a big guy. Uh, that'll appeal to a small part of the audience, but I don't think really an audience that really goes to, not that anyone's going to matches right now, but really an audience that are wrestling fans anymore. Uh, and he was with Taz. And I, I remember my boy, uh, Jason Mitten, my young boy, he was uh, like, why with Taz? And I was like, well, I'm not a Taz fan as a commentator, but um, I always liked him as a character. And I actually think that's a good use for him. I think he's better as a manager than a, a commentator a lot because I don't have to listen to him. But I think he fits a role. I like the coaches in AEW. You know, you've got Arne Anderson, Tully Blanchard, and now uh, you've got Taz. And Taz, I mean, it makes sense because that's uh, Taz always had the uh, the people with him, and now he's you know with a guy, and he it was part of his gimmick was he was the you know the, the fighting guy, so it totally works. And then they can say. Uh, you know, the path of Cage. And uh, that makes me laugh. So They really put Cage over big in this. They really put over he was strong. Uh, they buried him under a, a bunch of plunder, and he powered out. Good stuff. Really good stuff. And it was interesting because I think uh, people will think AEW has one type of style where it's the high-flying guys. But, you know, there's other people there. It's just that they happen to have a lot of high-flying guys. But they really showcased uh, the strength of Brian Cage in this match. I like uh, MJF versus Wardlow versus the ju versus Jungle Boy. Uh, very good match. I'm a big fan of both guys. Uh, I grew Jim um, 
Ross, JR, the Jungle Boy. Should just be Jungle uh, Jack Perry. I think it's a better name. I think Jungle Boy. When you put boy in anyone's name, he gives yourself. I know you got heartbreak kid and stuff. So I mean, whatever. But I think Jungle Boy. It's does it come off like a main event name? Where I think this guy has main event uh, charisma, and uh, especially when you have a crowd, he's he's really over. MJF just is the man. Uh, one of the I was just say best heel in the business, but uh, I got to put Jericho up there. But he's right up there. He's right up there. Just an amazing talent. It's a guy that they have to make sure uh, they sign and, and, and don't let go. Because once uh, Jericho, you know, he has a limited run, Jericho, because he is, you know, in his 50s. So once he's not an active wrestler, this is a guy that could fit that top heel uh, role, MJF. So you got to keep him strong. Uh, you know, protect him over these this you know year or two, however it is you know long to build up to like a world champion material. But definitely, uh, your future main heel is MJF. Uh, Cody versus Lance Archer, I thought it was great. I did see some people didn't like this match. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, I thought it was an excellent match. Uh, Lance Archer, I'm a fan of, and I think I think Cody Rhodes is the best babyface in wrestling. Uh, he knows how to work as a babyface and. So he's like a good guy who still who doesn't turn the fans on him, which is uh, really rare nowadays, especially in WWE. You have a lot of the guys, and they they'll try to tell you that like uh, you know rest, you just can't play the goody good like the the baby face anymore in wrestling. They'll just hate you, but it's not true. Cody Rhodes is like a, a he's you know a classic baby wrestling baby face, and uh, when there are crowds, they love him. Um, MJF had the match of the night, Dob says. Yeah, it was pretty good. Cheetah and Nyla's match of the night. I mean, it was fine, though. That was actually a really good match. I'll get to that in a minute. The Murder Cock Lobster. I don't like the Murder Hawk uh, monster. I think it's too many words. I think it should just be Murder Hawk or the Hawk Monster or Murder Monster. It's just too many. Uh, let's see here. Where was the next match? Uh, Chris Statlander versus Penelope Ford. This was, this was fine. There was, you know, nothing to write home about, but it was fine. Uh, it was better than some of the, some of the other women's matches in AEW. It's not their strongest thing as women's, but this was fine. And they kept it short. Uh, Dustin Rhodes with Sean Spears was fun. Uh, I would have liked the longer match because I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of Dustin Rhodes. And I really like Sean Spears, who's a guy, when they signed, I was just like, why? But because uh, the perfect ten gimmick did nothing for me, but uh, he's really coming to his own in, in AEW. This guy proved his worth, and Dustin I think is on top of his game even at his age. And uh, I hope this isn't his um, his uh, last match, which I don't think it will be. Uh, Sheeta versus Nyla Rose. I actually thought this was arguably the best uh, women's match in AEW. Thought it was very good. Uh, Nyla Rose's best match, I would say. Uh, she does very good talent, and uh, she worked well with uh, Nyla Rose. And I was, I was glad to see uh, she did win the title. I think uh, she's the best active woman uh, wrestler in AW. I think Britt Baker is not the best wrestler, but the best all-around character. But she's hurt right now, unfortunately. Uh, John Moxley versus Brody Lee, and this was uh, this was good. I don't think it was excellent, but I thought it was good. I really liked the finish. Uh, I, th- I think going in, Brody Lee had a lot to prove. Uh, and I don't know if he necessarily did that, but I don't think it was a bad match by any means. I thought it was, it was good. I really liked it. But I don't, I don't know if uh, he's proven that he's – I don't think he's in the right gimmick. Um, it needs some fine-tuning. I don't mind him being the leader of the, uh, of the Dark Order, but it just doesn't quite work uh, for me. Uh, Broken Matt Hardy in the Elite, which is Adam Page, Kenny Omega, Matt Jackson, and Nick Jackson versus the Inner Circle, Chris Jericho, Jake Hagar, Sammy Guevara, Santana, and Ortiz. This is my early pick for match of the year in the headies, the, sta- the stadium stampede match. This, to me, was fun. Now, this was – they had, like, a regular wrestling match in a stadium, and then they – then they also utilize some of the techniques we've seen in some of the WWE stuff, the um, cinematic matches. But to me, it worked. Now, this might be personal taste. You might say, Jack, how can you like this and not like 
that fucking uh, abysmal uh, uh, that oh my god that fucking WrestleMania one with uh, with Bray that was horrible that was that was the the uh, the worst of all those and then that money in the bank the money in the bank was like it had some fun parts to me but overall it was just bad and the comedy so poor where the comedy in this it was all very funny to me and uh, I loved it. I thought it was just a very fun from beginning to end. Um, right now during the pandemic, I think it's a time to do some fun stuff. Uh, everyone's, you know, at home. People know people are sick or dying. And to get your, your mind off all that, you don't necessarily want to see, like, some hardcore brawls and battles. And uh, this was the epitome of fun to me. I just had a great time. And I, I liked the, the, the uh, AEW show that led into this. Uh, they were also in the stadium. And Hangman Page did a 100-yard hundred, uh, hundred run into the clothesline, which is just awesome. So many cool spots in this. You can tell Jericho's having a blast. You can tell everyone's having a blast. I saw uh, the piece of shit there, um, Chris Cruz. He was like, oh, I'm in a tournament for having a, a drowning spot. Like, fuck this guy, dude. What, what are you trying to prove? If you, if, if you get A&W in trouble or get him knocked off TNT, you're not. You're getting all these people out of work. All the wrestlers out of work. All the production crew out of work. All the commentators out of work. What? Why would you want to do that? Why? Especially right now, um, during the pandemic, when people are having trouble with jobs and sports, or if they cut pay and stuff. Why would you want? Uh, yeah, if you're part of the wrestling business at all, part of the wrestling industry, why would you want all these people out of a job unless you're just a piece of shit asshole. That's it. Just an asshole. Uh, let's see. I hope we find out that Jackie Chan was patient zero. What the hell? Whoa. Cruz is trying to prove what a prick he is. I agree. Fuck that guy. All right. So that was that was an excellent show. I really dug it. I give it thumbs up. Watch it. Love it. Oh, so I normally, this is normally all decked out with uh, horror stuff, which it still has behind me. But last minute, I was like, let's do uh, In Your Head tonight off here. So I did throw up some wrestling stuff. We've got, uh, I don't know what these are, some little wrestling dudes I had. This is Abdul the, an Abdul the Butcher uh, figure from Japan. I'm just going to leave it at that. You uh, decide what you think of that. Your own. Uh, the Eighth Wonder of the World, excellent book. Highly recommend you can go back in the archives and listen to an interview with uh, the, uh, Bertrand Hibbert and Pat Leprade. And here is a uh, Ultimo Dragon Mask. Pretty sweet. All right. I'm going to go to my uh, phone here. So don't think I'm just like texting someone or something. I'm going to try to uh, look on the phone. I think it'll be uh, it'll be easier for me to... Uh, to read the comments. Bear with me. All right. So here we go. We're live. I'm just going to go to uh, the, the watch party here. See what's going on. All right. All right. Here we go. Sorry, folks. This is uh we're doing on the fly here. Try and uh, try seeing that to cuck Chatham. I don't know what that means. Uh, Brian Cage was on point. Good to have a big, a few big guys. I agree with Dobbs. Nice one, Al Boob. Gonna zoom in, but might wait till the pay-per-view review is over. All right, Nikhil, you can do it anytime. The review's over. Pull up the zoom here. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Taz was believable and not immediately despicable for the first time in 15 years. I think AW found a, pe a piece of old Taz to utilize. I agree. I agree with that. Um, let's see. MJF had the match of the night in a pick. Who's good match? Marty Van Vuren says she and Nyla had match of the night. I thought it was good. Uh, Owl of the murder cock lobster. I think I already said that one. Uh, Nikhil says Lance Archer should reunite with Jimmy Rave. The rock and rave infection. I knew! I knew Nikhil would love that. He loves anything obscure. He, is, uh, he loves obscure wrestling. All obscure wrestling. Maybe that could be his wrestling promotion. 
Uh, let's see. Am I too bright? I mean, not mentally. Obviously, I'm too bright mentally, but it seems like I'm very lit up here. Not lit like I'm... Uh, let's see here, maybe this. A little better? I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Marty Van Buren. Still seems very bright. Uh, Penelope's good... Goods look good. Totally skipped over Dustin Rhodes and NSYNC. Uh, I dig it out all. The elves uh, suggest the cock and crave infection. Uh, Penelope should do a few more booty squats. Whoa, I don't know. I think she's pretty good looking in Dobbs. I don't, I don't think he'd be kicking her out. Uh, Marty Van Buren. I uh, hope we find out Jay. We did that one. Hannibal's going to be pissed over the Abbey figure. Yes, he will be. I actually have Abdul the Butcher Blood, which is kind of weird, I will admit. But uh, they were selling his blood on a website years ago when I first got online. It was like 2001, 2002, something like that. And so he was... This is really nasty, but I have it. I don't know where it is. Maybe I'll get it in one of these video shows. And it's um, – so they had these white, like, towels, and they, they, they wiped them off after he did, like, a real bloody match, which I know is surprising for a dual butcher. He'd have a bloody match. And they uh, – and so they took the towels. So it's got a, a smear of his blood, and then uh, he signed them. So the signed bloody towel. And by the time I got it, and it's probably worse now, the, the blood, it doesn't stay red. It's like brown. It looks like he wiped his ass or something. But I assume it's uh, – they told me it's blood. Uh, let's see his blood. Man. Dobbs is just wanting to see the blood. Drink the blood on Patreon. It's dry blood. Can you, can you get, like, diseases from old – from, like, 15-year-old dry blood? Not that I want to find out. Let's see here. All right. Da, 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 da. Uh, it's good to see you. Thank you, Lindsay Cat. Lindsay Cat. I'm a big fan of Lindsay Cat. Looking good. Uh, Kim Trails, thank you. By the way, you can uh, go and check out, go uh, Google Lindsay Cat, listen to her music, watch her videos. And Kim Trails from the tomb of Nick Cage. I'm friends with, with a lot of very talented musicians. Lindsay Cat. Kim Trails, also known as Missy Mooney. Uh, Jerry Vitetta, pumped for the return of Drake Goulash. Yes, we all are pumped for that. All right. All right, so I'm going to go to the questions here. Excuse me for looking at my phone. So I have many uh, screens here going on. All right. Where are these questions? By the way, is uh, Nick, did Nick Kill want to zoom in? Zoom in, buddy. Not seeing you. Ah, uh, let's see. Here we go. Questions for in your head. It's my first time doing uh, a solo show here, so, so if you get a little uh, dead air, so be it. All right, Dobbs wants to know what is your favorite type of cheese? I like a mild cheddar. Getting into deep questions right away. He's like, I'm not throwing this man softballs. I'm going right to the jugular. What is your favorite type of cheese? My favorite type of cheese. He likes a mild cheddar. I do like feta cheese and, and salad. You know what? It would probably be easier for me to say what kind of cheeses I don't like because I'm a, I'm a fan of the cheese. Uh, let's see. what I, I don't really like Swiss cheese, actually. Not a big fan of the Swiss cheese. I like blue cheese. I like cheddar. Uh, not really a big fan of American cheese either. It's not. That's technically not cheese, by the way. American cheese. Uh, mozzarella, obviously. Yeah, I have Italian. Hey, so I could say stuff like a spicy meatball. Otherwise, you'd be like, "What is wrong with this guy? He's being total racist." Uh, Dobbs, what's a note? What are your thoughts? Uh, intermittent fasting. I have not tried this. Uh, my brother has. But 
Things are working good for me, so I don't want to try that. I like to eat. I like the snacks, so I probably don't want to do this. Oh, man, Nikhil is on the Zoom. Who's Zooming who, Nikhil? Last time I saw Nikhil. Now, I've said this before. When I, when I meet someone online, forever in my mind, they're that age that I first met them. I think you were like 12 or something. When I first yeah, met. I agree. <laughs> now I talked to you in the first time in like, I don't know, a decade, 15 years or something, and you got like a mustache. Oh, yeah, I know. I've grown up. When I um, first joined, I probably had like one nut hair, but now I've got like yeah. two. So it's brilliant. Oh, nice. So the, the little, the four, and do you still want to be called Little Muffin, even though you're like oh, a man with a mustache? All right. The Little yeah, Muffin, of course. Neil Callahan is here. I probably butchered the last name. No, it's fine. Um, I I'm mean, I can't Nikhil. remember. Is that correct? Did I say that correct? Yeah, no, All that's right. fine. That's perfect. I can't remember the last time I called in. It must be like ten years ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. It was a long it was time. Decade. I mean, I kind of just stopped liking wrestling for a bit. I used to like mm -hmm. TNA. Then that kind of went shit. Um, yeah. Kind of WWE's just been all over the place, and I think with like All In and stuff, that kind of got me back into it. It, it, I got, even though I, you know, I did keep doing the show, yeah. so I keep and and you know watching things just to decide something to talk about. But AEW yeah. really saved my wrestling fandom. Yeah. Is a yeah. that's that's the promotion I actually enjoy to watch. Yeah, um, and follow. So yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I kind of watched WWE when Jericho was doing the list with Kevin Owens. I, right. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. But I never, I haven't watched SmackDown in years, like fifteen years. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, Raw is like if you miss it, you don't feel like you have to watch it again because right. nothing really happens. So I'm glad, obviously, like AEW is around because yeah, to me, like yourself, it is the best show at the moment. Like mm -hmm. it definitely is hands down. And obviously, I missed. I think I was still in the Facebook group within your head, but yeah, I just kind of just I probably stopped listening to in your head, and then um, what? Yeah, no, then I, then what I've done is I've actually caught up on all the episodes. I really? Just, uh, wow, yeah, that was, how long did that take? Like five years? It took me a long time. It did take me a long time. Some of them were like four hours. Yeah, no, I love them. I love them all. Um, I didn't even watch them in chronological order. I kind of just, you know, like if you did a WrestleMania review, I I'll just listen to that and then... Mm. Roar, then finally I'm, when you ran out of stuff, you're like, well, I might as well watch this, whatever the hell this is. <laughs> Yeah, then I was like, um, well, I might as well listen to like listen to them live now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there you go. So, so yeah, no, it, it's it's been good. Um, well, you got was, my vote for comeback of the year in the hoodies. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I mean, um, I obviously I read um, re what re what recently that you obviously went through kind of some health issues. I'm glad you've uh, overcome those and Thank are you. doing better. I think that's yeah. really really good. I was, appreciate that. It was sad to hear kind of what happened, but I'm glad you've recovered. Thank you. Um, that's, that, that's the main thing. And obviously you're doing well in Hollywood. <laughs> and uh, with all Yeah, I'm, uh, I've got movies. Uh, I don't know when they're coming out because of the, the virus here, yeah. but, but I've actually made them, and I think uh, that's uh, – I'm very proud of that. I had amazing experiences, and uh, hopefully yeah, no, was, uh, we'll be doing more of that in the future. Yeah, no, I was listening to all your stories, like when you went to Hollywood. I know you came to London as well, mm -hmm. um, doing all You weren't there. Franchise. You were hiding. No, I know. So I was really angry. I was so disappointed in myself. But if you do come back, I will I will definitely be meeting okay. up with you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was obviously good to hear OIB as well. I'm glad you answer all my questions. I know I ask you 10 questions every week. I <laughs> love it. I look forward to that every week. I think, and, you know, they're, you, they're almost all wrestling related. You know, we yeah. get a lot of stuff about sodomy and stuff, but so it's good to actually ask <laughs> to, to answer some. So it is. There is some wrestling talk on the show. That's always good. Yeah, no, but it's because when I kind of stopped watching Raw and WWE just in general, I basically watched all of Nitro on the network. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, I wasn't alive. Well, I was very young at the time, so I don't remember it. I was like, well, you guys obviously lived Monday Night Wars. Right. Why don't I? Why don't I kind of ask your opinion? Of kind of how it was and yeah that's why i kind of just ask all these kind of random questions that kind of come to my mind yeah no i appreciate glad. it and i always like it when you, you you really get into some obscure people and in my yeah. mind these are just all people you're fans of i don't know if you are or not but i'm just like wow he, he has some he has some, expected some, cases. some some of them i do like like i used to like um 
Kurt Hawkins 10 years ago. Yeah, I remember that you were a big fan of his on our old message board. And this yeah. was more of like a, anyway, well, I think he was just one of the Edgeheads then. Yeah, yeah. And then I also liked um, oh, Trent Beretta and Kalen Croft. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, used, I used to like them. I honestly did. And obviously I started following like Trent, so I'm glad he's doing really well now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the, the best friends. The best one friends. of my favorite acts. Yeah, and, no, definitely. There's a lot of great acts in AEW. Because I, when when I saw Orange Cassidy for the first time, a lot of these guys in AEW, I've never really heard of Orange Cassidy. Mm-hmm. Taylor, yeah, I didn't know you. Darby either. Allen. Yeah, I never I, heard of them either. I've never heard of them. I just feel like they're doing a really good job with their storylines, their matches, and they kind of basically when you watch Dynamite, uh, we watch it on a Friday here. You kind of, I'm not really excited for the next episode, mm-hmm. and I, and I think that's I think I was reading some like. Nitro stuff and that was it with Nitro it was like you couldn't wait for the next episode and mm-hmm. I think that's how wrestling should be and that's how I feel like Dynamite is yeah it's very very good mm-hmm. yeah I agree it's the one show I look forward to every week uh, yeah. if I miss Raw which I actually don't watch anymore like it, <laughs> yeah. even when I was watching like it didn't really matter but yeah AEW is the one I, I really it, it uh, you know like emotionally attached to the product and the wrestlers and, definitely I mean I saw you when you went to the and it's fun. Did you go to Revolution? Was it Revolution? Uh, what is that? La- was that the last pay per view yeah. in Chicago? Yeah, 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 that, yeah was that, that that looked amazing. Like I yeah, it was awesome. And, and shout out to Chai Town Matt. He got us uh, front row seats, which was pretty crazy. Legend. So I, I got on TV for the pay per view, which was pretty awesome with my yeah, no, I saw that. Gear on. Yeah, I remember. I remember seeing. That. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> 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 it's very because fun. because Tony Khan said um, after the pay per view he was like oh AEW was supposed to come to London next month uh-huh. for Fighter Fest yeah I think and I was like oh, for fuck's sake I was like really bloody annoyed yeah because um, yeah I think they're I, doing it uh, again but it's I think it'll just be in uh, Jacksonville yeah I th- because I haven't been to a wrestling event here I mean I went to all the TNA ones and they stopped coming mm-hmm. um, I have not been to a WWE one years i couldn't tell you the last one i went to it's been so long so it'd be nice to have something kind of new mm-hmm. to come to and obviously here in the uk we kind of love any new company and it'll be it'll be pretty amazing so i was a bit disappointed with that with all the covid19 crap but you know hopefully um it kind of gets back to normal kind of asap yeah which, which is the main thing mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah they were that, they were that. they had a show coming in Boston too, um, like a month or two ago, and we had tickets, but you know, obviously it was uh, yeah. delayed yeah, or went, canceled or whatever. You you went to the first show, didn't you? Was it the second show? Yeah, the the first time they were in Boston, it was yeah. awesome. Yeah, I think we saw, I think I saw you on TV as well actually when I was watching it. Oh really? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Um, I, th- I think it's getting famous out there. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was on their uh, on TV on uh, one of the other shows in Boss in in uh, Chicago. I mean, I don't think I made. Oh, okay, a... oh, okay. It must have been the Chicago one then. Yeah, yeah. it must have been the Chicago one. I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. After the pay per view. Yeah, my friend caught the uh, the belt. Nice. Cody Rhodes belt he threw out. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Shame yeah. you Those guys are awesome okay. too. They stayed for like ever after the show until like the building told me to leave. You know, just throwing stuff out to the crowd and talking to the crowd, and it's like you could yeah. tell that they all genuinely, you know, love their audience. Yeah, I just think they're doing something different, like what we want and what we like. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, obviously, like they're never going to be number one in the world, but they can always be the alternative. Mm-hmm. And being the alternative is is nothing wrong with that. And they've obviously got a die. Yeah, and it's not like a super distant number two, like you know, like uh, TN, uh, TNA never. Like I liked TNA for a long time, but it never yeah. really had this big momentum behind it. Never had like big crowds or anything. No, that yeah, because that was one of the questions I asked you. I was like, how do TNA? They just never sold out arenas, like nothing. And no, I, know, I don't know. And they had huge names. Yeah, that's what they had more bigger names than AEW. Yeah, like Kurt Angle, Sting, uh, Nash, Flair, Hogan. Mm-hmm. They had everyone, but they couldn't. They just couldn't. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong. Um, but I mean, Eric Bischoff has been saying a few things in his podcast um, about kind of TNA and where they went wrong. So maybe it's kind of yeah. like the management side. Mm-hmm. It's just weird. I mean, we had Hulk Hogan. And... Yeah, I think I stopped when Aces and Eights came in. And I was like, yeah, I'm not doing. That's this. when I stopped watching it because it was it got so bad. And like the big yeah. surprises were like Devon Dudley was a member, and I was like, come on. 
<laughs> like nothing, he's fine, but like you can't be your big surprise. Like this is Scott Hall level, you know, joining yeah. the NWO or Hogan's the third member, and your big surprise is Mike Knox and not <laughs> D'Lo Brown Yvonne, and Taz. D-Lo. Yeah, I mean, come on, it's just bad. <laughs> Like Billy Ray was good. He was yeah. Good. He he Barbara. he did excellent in that. Uh, I, I, it's too bad he didn't get a run as Billy Ray in, in WWE. Yeah, because I listened to. I think I saw him say something. I think it was Jericho's podcast, and he basically said it was all ready to do the Billy Ray character, but they couldn't go through with it because of the the bully relationship they have with that bully. Yeah. Uh, WWE have and they said they couldn't do it. Yeah, like, which sounds like bullshit. Like money. they can't have a guy called Bully, and he's the bad yeah. guy who gets beat up. It's not yeah, like he's exactly. the, the hero, and so like they have a hero. It's called the Bully or something. But yeah. I mean, Bully. It's not like he's called like you know, rapist McGee yeah. or something. I mean. <laughs> yeah, so it's just a bit silly. Um, Especially when he's the uh, heel, he's the guy that gets beat up. He's like. He gets to come up and the bad guy is supposed to be disliked. And He's I supposed to have traits that people don't like. Exactly. And that's what he said. He said, eventually I'm going to get beaten up by the big baby face and I'm going to be telling people why you shouldn't be a bully. Exactly. That's money. It's money. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. It's uh, disappointing. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's it really. That's, I just want to call in, say hi. Good. It's been a I while. I appreciate you calling in. It's good to no hear problems. from me. And good to see you. Yeah, you too, Jack. Next time I really see you, you're going to have like a big white beard. Like, <laughs> like a Gandalf, the white. <laughs> right, yeah, you look like my brother. Yeah. <laughs> well, he dyed his purple. Oh, interesting color. Yeah, well, it looks pretty cool. The flea, the flea, wasn't it? That's his name. Yeah, the flea. Right? Yep, the flea. Yep. Yeah, I remember him. I'm trying yeah. to get him to download Zoom. So everyone, go and bug Troy. Troy Jones, my brother on Facebook, also known as the flea here. Go and bug him. Tell him, download Zoom. It's easy. It's quick. And you can get yeah, on no, these videos with me. Yeah, no, it's good. I like this new way. I've been, I've been meaning to call in, but um, yeah, obviously, but, yeah. But I just started doing here. these uh, for without your head stuff, and I thought, well, why not try for in your head? I think it'll be fun. Yeah, kind of get won't get with the times, but keeping up with the times if they say. Right, right. Yeah, Dobbs. Yeah. He he's all about watching videos, so I think this is the wave of the future. <laughs> No problems. Um, well, look, I'll leave you to it. It's been great right. speaking yeah, to good. you. Yeah, good. Thank you for calling. It's probably um, late there too, isn't it? Like yeah, one forty-five. Two in the morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> no problems. Um, say hi to Incha and uh, I'll speak to you on the kind of Facebook group. All right. Good night, man. No worries. Take care. Nikhil is a good man. The little muffin. All right. Go from the little muffin to the big muffin. We have we have Stephen from Butler Town, all the way in Toronto, on the line. What's going on, Stephen? Yeah, Stephen. Hello. What the hell is he doing? Is he even paying attention? Was he just watching television? He just like I'm going to get on here and and just be on the video. Hello, McFly. Look at me on the Zoom. Don't look at me on Facebook because it's uh, it's on delay. What are you doing, buddy? I cannot hear you for speaking. What is he doing? Stephen Butler is connecting to audio. Uh. Speaker forever, hold your peace. Oh, might as well get to the questions. It says he has me muted. Like he has me myself muted, or is I don't have him muted. I don't think. You hear me? Oh, there we go. There we go, Stephen. I I really hate Zoom. <laughs> Man, so negative here. I'm the fan of the Zoom. It's easy. We can oh. live stream it right here to Facebook. You can't live stream Skype. Yes, exactly. Skype. I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah, but I can't live stream better with that. <laughs> ah. I think you're listening to the show in the background. I should probably mute that for a moment. You'll get a, you'll get the hang of it. Now you're listening to yourself. From yes. Let's go. All right. Uh, hi, like I said, I don't know how to use this. You'll get the hang of it. Then you'll be an expert. Then you'll love it. You'll be like, "What was I thinking, Jack?" I love the Zoom. How could I ever doubt Zoom? 
is the wave of the future. So what's going on, Steve? Uh, Turn off the show in the background. Yeah, that's just it. I don't know how to do this. On Facebook, uh, mute it. It'll be like in the bottom right corner. Now you're listening to oh, bottom right corner. <laughs> yeah, just click on like the the little box with the uh, with the sound thing. Then you'll love it. You'll be like, "What was I thinking, Jeff? I love the Zoom. <laughs> I don't ever doubt Zoom." Oh man, you see the video? Or just close it for now, and you can go back to it after after you're done talking. Turn off the show in the background. Yeah, that's killing the show, Steve. What are you doing? <laughs> Don't you know how to mute like a, a video on Facebook? You just like click the little icon, put you put the X through it. All right, I don't want to yell at you. I'm just messing. I mean, I'm having a good time. Now he's not speaking. Oh, I'm gonna go to the questions while Steven figures out his audio. It's all good. Don't don't be upset. Um, Marty Van Buren wants to know. Would testicles and male life be better if located inside the male body? It's an interesting question because you would have uh, protection when you get kicked in the nether region. So you're like whoop, you're walking down the street, and Billy Joe's walking up, hey, asshole, and he's like, ooh, and you go, ooh, and you fall down. So if it was up in you, that wouldn't happen. What are the benefits of having uh, the testicles outside the body besides uh, manipulating them and feeling well. I don't. I don't know. You should probably ask someone else. Dobbs Dean Maya. It's a weird question for a wrestling podcast. What do you have in your cheeseburger toppings? I like raw onions, ketchup, mustard, crispy bacon, less tomato, dill, relish. I'm not an onions guy. Not an onions guy. If I if I was just gonna go basic, probably bacon and cheese. I really don't eat a lot of burgers anymore. I'm sorry to say. Well, I'm not sorry to say, but just so you know. Uh, if I do, I actually have it on uh, on lettuce. But uh, if I just pick anything, I really pretty much I like to try some weird stuff. But I do like bacon and cheese uh, and pickles, pickles, lettuce, tomato, that kind of thing. Uh, I do like ketchup too. I know some people are anti ketchup, but I like the ketchup. I like the mustard. Marty Van Buren, what for wrestlers, actors, or heady versers? or of any gender, would you like to cast and direct in your own pornity? Is that a parody of pornies? Uh, dramatization, dramatization of the Montreal screw job. Cast limited. Oh, wait. So who, I, wait a minute. I don't understand. So I'm going to cast whoever I want, but the cast is limited to these people you suggest. Cast limited is Sean, Brett, Earl, and Vince. So do I have to do I have to find cast members to play those people? So let's see. Who would I don't know any porn actors. I honestly don't. Um, oh, wrestlers. Actors. So let's see. Let me think about this. Who would be a good Bret Hart? Who would be a good Shawn Michaels? Who would be a good Earl Hebner? I think I'm gonna do Steven. From so Stephen Butler is going to be my Earl Hebner. Mm. Sean Michaels, Bret Hart, Vince McMahon. It's a tough one. Uh, I think Vic Schiavone will be my Vince McMahon. Sean Michaels and Bret Hart. I'll be Bret Hart, and uh, intro will be um, Shawn Michaels. Uh, Jerry Vitetta, how hard is your dick for the reason signing of Drew Gulish? So everyone's, like, all excited. Drew Gulak is his real name. I know this, but I like to have fun. Trevor Gulash, uh, Trevor Burbick, whatever the guy's name is. Uh, everyone was like, this is, like, the biggest, the biggest guy that they lost, and AEW should get this guy and put the sky rockets behind him, put the, the jet pack on him. Bad blast, Drew Gulak to the moon. This guy is money. They're like, this is the best guy. He's the modern day Hulk Hogan. He's got the working ability of Ric Flair. He has the, he's got the drawing of Lou Thez. They're just like, this is, this is the greatest guy we've ever seen. He was fired. He was on TV. He was fired, and then he's brought back like the next day. 
Good for him. Do I care? I'll say this. So they brought back uh, Drew Goulash, and they put a belt on Apollo Crews. Does that make me excited to start watching them again? No. But uh, good for them. Good for them. Who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll watch it again one of these days. I'm sure we will. Uh, thanks, Jack. I get spit on. I'm sorry. I just wanted to, to include you. I guess getting spit on isn't the best inclusion. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? Next questions. Would Incher rather be Lexar to have his ass waxed or let Michael Hayes have his way for half an hour? Damn. This is some interesting. Uh, let's see here. W what would he rather have if he was here right now? He seems to be a big fan of swag, so I think he'd rather get his ass swags. Paul Fluitt, yes! What the fuck is Chris Cruz's problems with AEW? I went over this earlier, but I, yeah, I agree with you. I don't. This guy's just an asshole. Uh, he's just really, if, if you get AEW like in trouble, even if you don't like AEW, if you don't like it, like I don't really like WWE, but I don't wish him ill will. I don't want them to, 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 to die. I don't want the people to lose their jobs. So to want a company to end and, and then every, all the employees lose their jobs, I mean, there's like something wrong with you. That's just really just being an asshole. John Brown, with the more recent advent of surreal booking, would you say that a guy like Orange Cassidy could get a run on top? Absolutely. I actually think he could anyway, but right now, yes. Dobbs Dean Maya. I honestly think he, he could be anyway. You just got to book him right. Dobbs Dean Maya, do you think it's good that Orange Cassidy talks? I prefer him not talking minor inconvenience to still love the gimmick. Um, I see what you're saying, but I think if you are going to use him more on the TV, he needs to talk. So I'm good with it. Uh, Rene Merced, remember when we saw William Regal's wiener on WWE television? Why didn't you see it enter? Enter is a weird thing. He can't. He doesn't see penises. Um, I think he just blocks it out of his mind because he's it gives him uh, a little. Um, Excitement in the pantaloons. Um, Renee Merced, how long will Vince McMahon live? And how quick, quickly will the WWE die after? Well, I don't want to uh, wish death upon anybody or even like your joke about uh, how long he'll live. I've had my, my share of near-death experiences, so I don't wish that on anybody. Um, it's interesting. Well, the WWE uh, ceased to be without Vince McMahon. It's a really interesting question because, like, a lot of people seem to think it's going to do better. And, you know, maybe creatively it possibly could, but I don't know uh, without Vince if – I don't know. It's, uh, we'll find out eventually. Al Ulb, in light of Hana Kamara's suicide, will Inter finally stop cyberbullying female wrestlers? Uh, it's a you know serious thing. It's horrible news. She's about twenty three, I believe. He killed herself because of cyberbullying on the internet, and um, it's just awful. Uh, at, and like I I can remember being you know picked on and stuff uh, when I was young, but I didn't have the internet then. So like if I when I left school, uh, you know I, I had my escape. So I don't know like. If if then like so you'd escape from real life, you go on what could be your your getaway, and then you'd be uh, attacked again online. I don't know. How, I don't know how I would have uh, coped with that. So I don't find any humor in anyone uh, killing themselves. I myself dealt with uh, depression, you know, and so I don't find any humor in that. It's horrible. And I know Sunny put out a thing. She was like, you know, I've been. People said bad things about me, but I didn't kill myself like it's good, like she deserves a pat on the back. And it's just like you're basically bullying this woman even after she killed herself, like saying she wasn't strong enough. It's like, is that needed? Even if that's your thought process, is it needed to be put out there in the world? I would say no. 22. Uh, Steven. Hey, are you there? Two, can you hear me? <laughs> See, you, I told, now you're going to love it. See, you guys all love it. <laughs> And we use this in our in where I work. We use Zoom, mm -hmm. 
and I and it just drives me up the wall and it drives me mad and makes well, me now it's gonna help you arrow. it's gonna help you in work and on in your head. <laughs> you know, like in your well, head has helped me in life. Well, thanks to um um uh yeah, somebody, somebody mentioned. Okay, just where the where the where the mute is, and I think right, I figured right. it out. Yeah, so. you got all you got all worked out, Stephen. You're an old man, older man. <laughs> yes, so, I'm an older know, one. Right. So the technology, but you look very youthful. <laughs> oh well, yes, I kept myself in good shape. Yeah, it's good to see. It's good to see. Yeah, we want Stephen around for a long time. So <laughs> what's going on, Stephen, in the world of butlers? Well. Um, it's, it's actually boiling hot, 30 plus degrees Celsius, uh, here in Toronto. Um, it what's was, that in uh, Fahrenheit? Uh, it's about, about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. No, that's pretty hot. If anybody wants to it's fact not check the me, heat, it's the, the humidity, math. they say. What's that? It's not the heat, it's the humidity, they, they exactly. say. Exactly. Yeah. It's a humid so there. I so I'm, I'm in a very humid area. Yeah, I had to work today in right here when I'm working from home. I'm using my computer, so I'm up here in the attic, and it is even hotter. Mm. So I'm in the basement. We got air conditioning. So I set this this beautiful book stand bookshelf up in my basement, but it's actually really cold here. I'm thinking I'm, I might move it all upstairs. Oh, no! You no well, one would have known unless I told them this was the basement. They would just assume this is like a bedroom. So what's the temperature like in there? I don't know. When I go upstairs, that seems very hot. Yeah. Oh wow. So do you have like um, is it all like, I my, my uh, friend of mine had like carpeting all in their basement mm. that you couldn't no, hear. No, I'm so, I'm, I have cement cement basement uh wood um wood ceiling to the house, but uh, um, where the floor is cement mm. and the walls. Mm -hmm. It's a cold down here, and it's pretty warm outside. It's cold, <laughs> yeah, right? it's even even at this time of the night, it's really hot in here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move all this upstairs by by uh, by the end of summer, so because I don't I think in the fall and the winter it'll be too cold for me. Oh yeah, it probably because the cold affects me now. When I used to was over three hundred pounds, I never got cold, but now I'm under two hundred pounds, and the the cold uh, can get to me. Oh. Well, since the pandemic started, I've put on some what I what you can call pandemic weight. So I'm about 180 pounds right now. I was much lighter mm -hmm. say, um, six months ago. And We're gonna you if you gain if uh, yeah I got I don't know about 15 pounds or so and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll be your weight. Oh well, <laughs> even I. I mean, I feel. I, I mean, I, I feel like I'm losing weight even as I sit here. It's that hot. So. All right. Well, that's good. You're like in a sauna. Yeah. So exactly. <laughs> I don't like us. I don't like saunas. Yeah. Not not for too long. You know, get in for a couple of minutes or a short amount of time, then get out. So. <laughs> so what's going on, Stephen, in the world of wrestling? Let's tickling so, your fancy. Uh, I tried to watch Mont Raw last night. <laughs> mm -hmm. Turned it on. I was a bit late. I think Seth Rollins was in the ring with Austin Theory and um, Murphy. There he was with his suit and his tie and his combed hair. And um, uh, I thought, I, I hate this gimmick. Last well, one people, I watched, I couldn't stand it. It's 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 very boring. <laughs> He's just really monotone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do even, think Seth Rollins is a good uh, uh, promo guy, and this just makes him worse. I think. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like I tried. I, mean, I tried. And then I think I stayed for Charlotte Flair and uh, Asuka. Um, but at, by then, I was like, I, I can't watch this anymore. I really can't. So I finally had to tap out, like, after a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. I did watch The Undertaker, Last Ride, Chapter 3. Um, I need to catch up on that. So well, I'll just say Chapter 3 was about... Um, uh, a very accurate analysis of um, the Brothers of Destruction versus DX di um, <laughs> disaster mm -hmm. um, from actually from all the participants. I think even Kane was in there, but uh, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Undertaker, pretty much accurately describing how bad that tag team match was. But I've been really enjoying the last ride about the only good thing about WWE that I've that, that for several weeks now. 
but I guess we're going to have to wait a few weeks for part four, um, like mid June. Does anyone know how many episodes this is going to be? I think it said four and five are in mid June, like in about a couple of weeks Mm -hmm. on the network, on the WWE network itself. I think they had dates for when the next episodes are going to be on. So we're going to just a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But it's really good. It's about the only thing about WWE that I'm actually enjoying. I'm looking forward to. Mm-hmm. It's, um, yeah, I, I've actually only seen the first episode, but I thought it was great. Um, part two, um, yeah. I, I thought part uh, the first episode and the third episode, but um, but I'm really enjoying this. Um, I did get to see a little bit of. Um, the AEW Double or Nothing show, basically the stadium main event. Mm-hmm. Really enjoyed that. Um, again, something a little different. You know, when you got yeah, no, I had a great. I thought it was very fun. I did too. I thought that was. I thought I enjoyed that. Again, something different when you don't have any fans in the stands and you yeah, gotta, you got to huh? think outside outside of the box. Yeah, you got to think. Okay, what do I got to do? What do you got to do? And that was really a lot. And of it, it used like some of the silliness that's in the WWE ones, but I just for me the comedy was way way better. Mm-hmm. I would even watch. And it I thought it worked. Where a lot there was some over the top silly stuff, but I didn't think it was so bad that I just was like, "What am I watching?" I just yeah. thought it was a good time. Yeah, I mean, it's a personal. Uh, preference, maybe some people, you know, I can see if it doesn't work for you, but I had, I had a good time. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, because I've seen people who really liked like the Money in the Bank, but didn't like it. And that, I'm, uh, that one, I'm a little. Uh, I mean, again, it's your own opinion, but I think that's a little strange. Uh, <laughs> if you thought like the Money in the Bank was done better, well, I, I actually was uh, actually planning on not watching it except for the main event, except for the Money in the Bank match, and I ended up watching the whole thing and enjoying it. So, oh, really? Yeah. Well, I could see if you like them both, but yeah, yeah no, I was not a fan. I wasn't a fan of that show. Did you like the rest of the show? Because I thought the rest of the show was so well like, it with, was, the, with total well, silence. Uh, see, the way I enjoyed it was I fast forwarded through about the first two matches. Well, yeah, I guess it's yeah. <laughs> like like Bobby Lashley versus um was it um Truth? Right. And, and the first match, I can't even remember what the other match was. Maybe it was the tag team the tag team match. Mm-hmm. Um all the multiple tag teams. Skip through all that and then just went to the next match after that and from there on watched the rest of the show. Mm-hmm. It, that's about the only way I can enjoy this is, is if something is just boring and putting me to sleep, I just got to fast forward through it. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what I did. But I enjoyed that. I actually ended up enjoying Money in the Bank. Um, same thing with Double or Nothing. It's like um, I enjoyed that main event. I, I, I didn't, I, I didn't, I got to catch up on the rest of the show. So would you recommend like, like all the everything in that show on AEW on the AEW double or nothing. Yeah, I would watch all show. I didn't think there was really any bad matches. I think there was a couple that weren't as good as the rest of the show, but I wouldn't. I didn't. I don't think there was a bad match on the show. Oh, okay. So maybe I'll check it out later mm-hmm. on. Yeah, I would recommend it. I liked it. Yeah, but but uh, yeah, it's really hard. It, it I'm, and and I'm a lifelong wrestling fan. Like I am as well. Watch years. it since I was a you know as far as I can remember. Watch with my grandfather when I was yeah. a little kid in the you know early eighties. So that's like forty six years I've been watching wrestling, give or take a few months. And um, this is the hardest time ever in my life to be a wrestling. I agree. Fan. <laughs> I agree. Even when I thought the stuff was bad, I still kept watching it. I didn't even really think about not watching it. But this is the first time, like. I just there's I don't watch Raw every week or, or Smack. I haven't watched it since WrestleMania, honestly. Besides the pay per views, it just I just found it like I didn't enjoy it at all. So why why watch it? Mm-hmm. But I saw that they had the people in the crowd, so I'm, I'll probably give it a shot again because that yeah, add, I, that does add something. I don't know how well WWE did it, but mm-hmm. yeah, with no with no interaction, it's wrestling is just it's just weird. I don't I don't enjoy it. So are these like all, I read that it, they were like um, the developmental, the um, the NXT. Yeah, the NXT. The the, I think it was like the NXT, like the you know not the NXT like star kind of people, but the NXT like trainees. Mm-hmm. 
as far as I know. I know one of them was The Rock, which I saw people were like, oh, well, she doesn't have the charisma of The Rock. or does she? And, like, I mean, for one thing, who has the charisma of The Rock? Mm-hmm. And it's too early to tell, like, what she's going to do. I mean, she's, like, literally right. a trainee. I mean, did you like Rocky Maivia when he debuted? Well, mm-hmm. I didn't. <laughs> so, like. Yeah, and this so would even had- be before. That would be, like, a parent, like. You know, Flex Cavana. Or, or Flex Cavana, yeah. yeah. Or even probably before that, probably like just when he was just in like training school, like even before he was on television. You know? So, I mean, it's just too early to tell. And and who who can be as like charismatic as a rock? I mean, that's like, that's huge. Truth. Even if she's good, like to think she's going to be that good is, that's putting, that's putting too much pressure on her. Mm-hmm. Oh. <sighs> And they were behind. Well, you might like that because you're Canadian. That they're behind hockey glass. You'd be like this. I, I this is very, uh, very Canadian well, here. I'm so used to being behind hockey glass. Let me <laughs> right. I, I just assume all of hockey's. But I'm mean, all of hockey. All of Canada is behind hockey glass. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Why are you ever wearing a hockey jersey? Well, first of all, it's like I said, it's eighty. It's 80 oh, well, plus that's degrees up here. <laughs> Are you but if you go again, into, though? but I, I, if you go into a hockey arena during a hockey game, uh, however, um, you better be wearing because uh, it's da- damn cold in there. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Yeah. Do Do you wear uh, what? What's your hockey team? Oh, no, Toronto Leafs. Maple Leafs. Okay. But actually, I've only been to. A, actually, I haven't been to a lot of hockey games. I thought the best hockey game I went to was actually in the old Montreal Forum in Montreal, Quebec. It was the Montreal Canadiens versus the uh, Quebec Nordique. And I said um, the Nordiques. So you, I bet you were impressed. I knew who the Nordiques were. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it. Like those fans are they talk about passionate hockey fans. Um, if you thought Toronto was pretty pretty wild, well, Montreal is even is even more passionate, and that was an enjoyable experience. I, I went to Montreal and got to see a Montreal Canadiens game in the old forum before it closed down mm-hmm. and um, against, against a fellow Quebec team. Of course, Quebec is now in, Col- in Colorado. They moved to Colorado and became Rockies. the Avalanche. So, oh, yeah. But, the Avalanche. Yeah, you're right. But I, I enjoyed that. That was, that, that was um, quite the experience. Um, mm-hmm. And speaking a little French helps too, so... Yeah, I used to sell a lot of old uh, hockey, like I sold uh, Nordic stuff, um, Hartford Whalers. I used to get a lot of money for the Hartford Whalers stuff. Um, One of the old, uh, you know, they're not a team anymore. World yeah. Hockey Association. Mm-hmm. I used to watch that Saturday afternoons at 1 o'clock. They used to have the Toronto Toros, were a WHA team, and um, they used to play in the Maple Leaf Gardens, uh, mainly because Harold Ballard took the money. And um, there would be hardly anybody in the in the stands during these games. Um, I noticed it was kind of like now, actually. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, Hartford. Um, actually, Wayne Gretzky got his debut. He was 17 years old with the, with, um, the Indianapolis Racers mm. when he became a professional hockey player. And, uh, of course, they folded, and he went to Edmonton, and, and uh, the rest is history. When, I, when, I used, when they used to show uh, wrestling for Maple Leaf Gardens on, um, on WWF-TV, on um, uh, what was the primetime wrestling, they would show some you know, matches from there. And as a kid, I th- always thought they said it was the Make Believe Gardens. <laughs> and I thought it was like a fake Madison, a Boston Garden, actually, because that was what I thought was the big you know, g- garden. And I was like, oh, they're wrestling at the Make Believe Gardens. This is just the fake, you know, Boston <laughs> Garden. But, you know, I was a little kid. I don't know. But I was remembering yeah. that. Yeah, they used to do that like once a month. Um, they'd go to the gardens to do wrestling. Mm-hmm. And I used to watch Maple Leaf wrestling. Actually, there was like, I don't know, like, it seemed like three or four different wrestling shows um, in Ontario. I, I, Saturday afternoons, I'd be in front of the TV all afternoon watching wrestling. Uh, WWF. Yeah, I used to watch anything I could get, anything I could see. Yeah. There'd be some weird lo- – I used to watch IWCCW. Which, uh, uh, they had, I mean, that's where, like, Taz came from and Tommy Dreamer and a lot of the, a lot of the East Coast uh, ECW guys. And they had also 
who is the it's curly something? He was basically a Three Stooges gimmick. He, I mean, he's terrible, but he was there. Tony Atlas was there for a while. Uh, Boston Bad Boy. Uh, but yeah, anything that I could get, I would watch. Yeah, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed so it's weird that. to think like to actively not watch something like if the Neil of like or you know Jack of uh, the eighties or something like holy shit, you can get, watch us wrestling every week. That's amazing. But now it's like wow, yeah, I can watch it, but I don't want to. Oh God! Somebody who wants to say hello. Hello. I thought I heard a cat meowing earlier. Well, we got a cat too, but she's okay. downstairs. All right. Hello. <laughs> That's Lulu. <laughs> I think I tried a cat named Lulu. Oh. All right. Anything else, uh, Stephen? I'm gonna get the rest of these questions here because I'm probably not gonna be real light tonight because it's just me. Oh well. Um, well, <laughs> the experiment uh, maybe got off to a bumpy start, but um, I think it's work. I think I figured out. Yeah. How to see, you, you, you can do it. You'll be fine. I have faith in you, Stephen. Okay. You're a good man. I like you, Stephen. Okay. Good to hear from you. And good to see you. Okay. Is it fun to call in and not be the only one on video? So is Incher going to join you on this? I have no idea. Oh. I asked him. I got no reply. That's usually how the conversation goes. I asked him some (laughs) no reply. And then, uh, then, you know, early in the day before the show, like, hey, I'm not going to be on the show. That's usually how conversations go. I know it's presented a different way, but it's not. But anyway, I, I love Intra and hope, hope he's well. Hmm. But I, I usually don't get replies if I ask him. Okay. But hopefully he gets It's very easy. And I think it would add, uh, I think it would be fun to do the show this way. So should I just mute again or leave or? Well, probably leave because then, you know, because you'll just be stuck there. In the, oh, okay. So I think that's the red that button it? on the bottom right here. I love it. Well, it, I think I can happens. just. Uh, there we go. There he's out of there now. He knows what's going on. Stephen can figure it out, guys. Yeah, he knows. So I got people watching all over the place. I got people watching on my Facebook. I got people watching on with the, on in your head. Then I got people watching on in your head in the uh, in the uh, watch party. I have this all figured out. Uh, I did a really great. Uh, honestly, if you guys are horror movie fans, or if you just movie fans, or whatever. Really great interview earlier with the cast and crew of um, Echoes of Fear. Highly recommend checking that out. It's on Without Your Head. Um, but I didn't realize you could do the watch party then, unfortunately. So uh, in the future, though, um, I'm going to do some watch parties. I've got a lot of these coming up on Without Your Head. So if you like horror or whatever, go to uh, facebook.com slash group slash Without Your Head Horror. We also have really cool. So tomorrow I'm doing one. Uh, Thursday I'm going to try to do Without Your Head. And then Saturday we're actually going to show a movie, Clickbait, and then we're going to do a live Q&A right after the movie. So you can come watch the feature film and then a Q&A with the cast and crew. So uh, to do that, you got to join the uh, Facebook group. Facebook.com slash group slash without your head or do it. All right. And I'm going to try to do some more stuff here in, uh, in your head. I, I like doing this. Maybe I'll get some guests on here with me. Um, where am I? Uh, da, 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 da. how long we got that one Owl in light we got that one Owl thoughts on Jungle Boy Cody doing Crippler cross faces during their matches on Double or Nothing I actually didn't uh, pick, the, pick that up they normally do when they do that I'm not a fan of people doing that because you're really just you're owl. look I know people said yeah they're wrestling moves but look there's countless wrestling moves you could do you, if you do that you're really trying to Pay some kind of weird tribute to uh, to Ben Juan. I don't think that's neat. Uh, Jason Mitten from his recent interview, Zach Ryder seems to think he'll end up in AEW. You think you'll someday be a woo 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 fan? I've never. Uh, I'm not like a f- active fan of his, but I always thought he was very over and got a totally raw deal because to me, it doesn't matter if a guy, if I think he's good or not, if the crowd is behind you. They should go with him. And he got himself over, and they really should have went with the guy, and they never did. Uh, Let's see. Don't forget, you guys can still uh, zoom in here if you'd like. Uh, Zoom in out, Ulb, or uh, he probably doesn't want to be seen. James, if you want to zoom in. James Kahn's a good man. Do uh, Mitten, whoever. 
Anyway, uh, Owl, does Intra finally respect Martha Hart now? Oh, by the way, that was amazing. It was the season finale of um, of Dark Side of the Ring uh, about uh, Owen Hart. And I was happy to see because there are some people who were really anti uh, Martha Hart who uh, did change her tune because they like, now I respect her, which I honestly don't know why you wouldn't to begin with, but but they finally had seen, like, I mean, her husband died and it was needless. And uh, for WWE to sue her over breach of contract after her f- husband died working for the company is just a little- this real that really put WWE in a bad light, and I'm glad people are, are coming along. I mean, I guess there are still some people, but anyone who's like really against the widow of of Owen Hart, I mean, that's you're like some sad, sad sex. Uh, Dorian Doc Patel, did what was Inter? Did Inter not have respect for? Her? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Dorian Doc Patel, how did Nia Jax hurt you? Never hurt me. I, I'm a Nia Jax fan. Al Oob, will Hornswoggle return as Becky Lynch's baby? Could work. Uh, Mar- it's actually funny. I, I kind of took me a minute to, you know, Leprechaun, Irish. Do it up. Marty Van Buren, could Brian Cage defeat Nyla Rose and a Mike Tyson on a pole match? Maybe we'll find out. We got Mike Tyson in the. By the way, uh, obviously that belt looked terrible. Uh, it's too bad that they uh, just. I mean, I understand they're in a bit bad spot. Wasn't finished. He had Mike Tyson to present the belt. What are you going to do? But uh, I don't know. Pay people the extra. I don't know. Uh, Marty Van Buren is Hikaru Shida, the real McCoy. I think she's very good. Yeah. Uh, should abused employees like Sami Z- 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 Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns form a union uh, using social media viral support such as hashtags and dabbling to finally motherfuck Vince? Uh, not necessarily motherfuck Vince, but I do think yeah, uh, it's it's always been the time. But I think you probably could get something together right now. I mean, you can't tell people like uh, you don't have to be there if you don't want to because of the pandemic, and then and then like. Uh, punish them when they decide not to like i okay if you say the belt there's like a kayfabe reason it is taking a belt off someone really punishment when they didn't really win it okay but like the other one where they don't they're not mentioning the guy and stuff i mean the guy's had leukemia and has kids and stuff and he doesn't want to be around all the other wrestlers i mean it only makes sense to me uh, Vic Schiavone ha- was anybody out there offended even a little by the pool spot during the stadium stampede? Being totally honest, Shad Gaspard was the last thing I thought about. Oh, wow, I didn't think about that. I wasn't, um, I didn't even put that together, but I, you know, um, I, I guess you know, I didn't think about that, but uh, I wasn't. I'm never a guy that can say, like, I'm not gonna yell at someone if they're offended. I mean. It's not me to decide if you're offended or not. I wasn't offended. But I, I, I didn't even think about the Shad thing. Uh, James Codd, new Britt Baker interview on AEW Unearthed. She's, uh, she's a great character. Yeah. I hope they uh, utilize her, even though you know she can't wrestle currently. Uh, Dobbs Dean Maya. I was watching that yesterday. He got bored. Uh, let's see. Vic Schiavone, was anybody out there? Oh, sorry, look at that. Uh, Owl, is this what Intra is doing right now? I believe that is what Intra is doing right now. And to find out what Intra is doing right now, you got to join the In Your Head group on Facebook. All right, well, I think that's all the questions. Um. Bear with me. I'm just uh, digging that Macho Man top. Thank you. Uh, it is a pretty cool shirt. Oh, yeah. Macho Man. What you going to do, Dobbs? Yeah. I'm thinking, thinking. I'm going to get you in the danger zone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Macho Man. Yeah. All right. 
Incher is a feel, two-time backsaber. Whoa. Uh, let's see. I think that's all the uh, questions we got. Thank you, guys. Uh-oh. Did Nikhil get questions in? He says he's got questions. Oh, there is more questions. All right. Let me see here. Bear with me. Get into the questions. I'm running solo here, so it might be a little dead air. Fuck it. Screw it. You can check out all my stuff here. I was going to put all wrestling stuff for in your head, all horror stuff for without your head, but it would take too much time. I'm doing more without your head stuff tomorrow. We're going to have to take this all down and put it back up. Not doing it. Not doing it. Where is it, the questions things? Here we go. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, wow. A whole bunch here. All right. Nikhil. All right. We got a whole bunch from Nikhil. Let me uh, get prepared here. Get the neck loosened up. Hydrate. Excuse me. A little stretching. Get some caffeine. All right, Nikhil. I think we're ready. The, the joint's moving. All right. We're all ready now, Nikhil. Let's see. Do you think the drowning scene in the stadium stampede match was quite shameful due to the death of Shad Gaspard? I didn't think so. I, I don't think so either, but I, um, again, if, if, you've, if some people did think so, I mean, I'm not going to say that they don't have the right to think so. Uh, there are rumors Matt Riddle will be going either to Raw or SmackDown. Do you think he'll end up being a big star or just a nobody? Um, I think if it's based on his talent, I think he'd be a big star. Now with no crowd, I think the odds are even worse for him because, like, if he had the crowd there and he was, like, legit over, uh, they'd kind of be forced to push him. And now I think without the crowd there to react, uh, they'll just go by whatever Vince thinks of him. I don't think he's a guy he likes. So I don't see him uh, doing well. Will Adam Cole get punished for attending Tony Khan's Memorial Day party? Oh, I didn't realize that. I would assume so, yes. I, I'd say yes. With Marty Skrull appearing on Being the Elite, do you think he'll be joining AW sooner rather than later? I do think he'll eventually be there. And I'm a huge uh, fan of Marty Skrull, the villain. That'd be a huge pickup for AW. Did you like the following and any memories? Show Miz, big show in the Miz. I did. I didn't think it was as good as uh, Jarrah's show, but I did think uh, I did think they worked well together. I think big show in the tag team works. Uh, team Rhodes Scholars, Cody and Sandow. Yes, uh, big fan of Cody Rhodes and uh, Damon Sandow. Fandango, I thought it was an underrated team, actually. I like Fandango. Um, I really like those skits they did. That was probably the highlight for me. Rybaxel. That was what? Ryback and Axel. I was going to say Axel Rotten, but no. Um, and not Axel Rose. Uh, yeah. Curtis Axel. Nah, I can't say I was a big fan of that team. Brad Maddox. Yeah, I like Brad Maddox. He wore his uh, vest too tight. But, yeah, I liked him. Good heel. Good guy you want to see get beat up. The League of Nations, no. I thought that that was a that was a, a very bad time in WWE. One of the one of the worst uh, main event factions I, I can remember. James wants to know, uh, do you think Cage will be a heel since a champion is a babyface? Yeah, I think he is a heel. I think if that's what I, I gather from it. Um Zima Ion. I kind of remember that name. I kind of remember me being pretty good, too. Didn't he have, like, big little hair or something? Robbie E. Uh, 
Was he ta- was he paired with with Zima? I like Robbie E though. Yeah, he's pretty good. Justin Credible's actually a fan of Justin Credible. Yeah, this is not just the best, not just the coolest, just just incredible. I liked it. By the way, was my Macho Man impression any good? Uh Prince Ayakea, the artist formerly known as. I liked him until he became the artist formerly known as. Uh, I wasn't really big on that. Um Mick Foley Security, Rocco and Sally Boy. What? What the hell was that? You stumped me on that one. I have no memories of that whatsoever. Rocco and Sally Boy? Diamonds in the Rough. I remember that. That was in TNA, right? It's Diamonds in the Rough. I can't remember if they were very good or not. I can't remember who they were. The Naturals. Eh. Brett Albright. I didn't see enough of them to really have an opinion. Shaniqua. Who was Shaniqua? I think that was the one that Kurt Angle was with for a while, I think. Nah. Do you think AEW's next pay per view will have a crowd scheduled for September? Um, it's probably I don't know. I really don't know how the what's going on. I think like actual crowds for like events like that will be one of the last things to happen, but I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe with some type of like limited crowd. Maybe I don't know. Who will face the AEW champion after Moxley versus Brian Cage? That's a good question. Um, I think I'm eventually going to go back to Jericho going for the title. Uh, why is Kurt Angle the special referee for NXT this Wednesday but was released last month? I have no idea. Maybe just trying to throw him something so he gets a payday. WWE are planning to do live events with no crowds. How will this work? I thought they said there will be no live events. I thought they thought they said that the uh, the house shows were a thing of the past. Maybe I'm wrong there, but if I don't know why you'd even bother doing house shows with no crowd. Uh, rumors are WWE are planning without Roman Reigns for a long time. Is this last week's scene of him on a full time basis? Or ret- I think he'll return eventually. Everyone returns. I think we'll see him back. Especially, uh, I think just once this stuff's over. You know, which, I mean, it could be longer than than what people, you know, think. Um, Rene Merced, if God came down from heaven and told you that you could make sure no one ever died again, but for that to happen, you have to take the hunting knife he's holding and burst through the doors in front of you and rape your own dad, would you do it as a good Christian? I'm not a Christian. Why hasn't Incher grown a goatee since shaving his head? Aren't all white guys who shave their head required to grow a goatee? That's a good point. I guess he's going old school. Tully Savalas, King Kong Bundy. I think some of the classic Baldies. Is Jack wearing pants? I am because it's cold down here. I'm actually wearing uh, Black Panther. Uh, I was had jeans on earlier, but I got into my uh, lounge pants. So I've got Black Panther lounge pants on. They're black and Black Panthers on, on gold. Pretty hot. And then I bumped the page. Was there any more, did it, or did I get them all? Okay. Do you find it weird that wrestlers tell people not to cyber bully people, but then go on to cyber bully the cyber bully? Yeah, it is weird because like it's you can't be like. Don't do this because someone's going to kill themselves. And then do that same act. Because, all right, now they got this guy who is cyber uh, attacking um, Alexa Bliss. What he said was shitty. No one's, well, some people will, mate, but most people aren't going to disagree with that. Um, And it's easy for me to say don't reply. But I, I, I mean, I'm not Alexa Bliss's level, obviously. But uh, even if I say don't reply to the, the trolls, things can get to me sometimes. So I, I get I get that. And she, this, pro, this must have hurt her on some level. So she replied, probably in the best interest not to even acknowledge it, but she did. And then so people are like, well, look at this loser uh, living in his mom's basement. You know, he's a virgin. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about this guy who uh, who did this. And they're just like, you know, you know, fuck this guy couldn't get a girlfriend. He, he you know, he's just the, the loser of all losers, which maybe he is. And I get like you give the guy his own medicine, 
But it is weird because you're saying you don't want to do this because uh, someone might off themselves or hurt themselves or just get depressed. And probably that kind of behavior will make that guy's behavior uh, worse because now he's going to feel even worse about himself and then he's going to attack out. But uh, what, is the, what is the proper thing? I think the proper thing is just don't reply. Uh, but, yeah, it is strange. It is strange. It, I think it's, uh, it's a thing like it's okay. I'm not saying it's okay, but I think people see it's okay to cyberbully someone they think is a loser, which is like probably like one of the last people you should do that too. But where it's like it's fine to say like a guy is like this loser lives in his mom's basement. Somehow that's okay to ridicule, but uh, other things aren't. Which, I mean, uh, I mean, the guy's a dick, so it's not like I really feel that bad for him. Uh, the old saying goes, if you're going to uh, dish it out, you have to be able to take it. But I do agree that it is odd. You're like, don't cyberbully. Let me cyberbully this guy. Anyway, I think that's all the questions. Was there uh, any other news? Uh, we mentioned Shad last week. is un- very unfortunate, obviously. Um, they reside Trevor uh, Burbick. Yes, I know it's Trevor. It's <laughs> yes, I know it's Trevor Gulag. Uh, let's see here. I think that was all the questions. I think we got all the news. Um, McMahon says he won't try to buy back XFL. Fucking, why the fuck did you do it the first time? Not that you bought, but why would you? Why? Oh, my God. It's a fool. I think that's uh, all the news here I want to go over. By the way, I am the 104,628th biggest superstar in all of Hollywood I'm coming after Batista. This is a scientific fact proven by IMDb. All right. All right. I think that's good. Anyway, so uh, I'll hopefully do some more of these. Uh, maybe I'll get some guests on here if anyone's into it. And uh, if you'd like to see more of me, which who wouldn't, go to uh, Without Your Head. It's uh, facebook.com slash without slash group slash Without Your Head Horror. Um, An interview early today with the, star, with the cast and crew of Serve Echoes, which was great. Uh, tomorrow I'm doing one with the cast and crew of Dinner Party, which is a, a comedy horror cannibal film and then uh thursday will be the live without your head with uh, james balsamo excuse me and then uh saturday we're doing uh it's going to be a really awesome time we're showing the movie clickbait by my friends michael uh, j epstein sophia cassiola and then right after that we're gonna do a live q a with like 10 uh 10 cast members uh cast and crewmen so it's gonna be a really good time check that out and if you miss it or whatever Go and subscribe to the YouTube page without your head. And uh, subscribe to IY Wrestling on YouTube because I'll probably be putting some videos up there as well. I need to – I have some actually some cool uh, video interviews are recorded at New England um, Fan Fest, which I never posted yet. Because uh, I was going to make an excuse, but no excuse. I just – I didn't post them. But let's get to them. Let's catch up, and we'll post them. All right. So I'm going to get out of here. I want to thank everyone for uh, watching. I had a really good time. And I hope you guys dug it. I had fun. And uh, if we do more of these, I'll get more used to it and know how to. Uh... I don't think I think this went pretty well, though. Anyway, out of here. Good night, folks. <laughs>